You're listening to Living Podcariously, bringing you real men's perspectives, unfiltered, unapologetic, and uncensored. Recorded live in the Living Podcariously studio in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida. Curiously, Phil Common. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Oh. Welcome to Living Pod Curiously. Again, it's another week. My name is Tack. My name is Adam. And my name is Andrea Joy. You guys take all the intro fun away from me. Oh, this oh, started up. Do, do it, it again. again. No, no, no. It's no, hard. roll Let's with it. Roll with it. Do what on. you wanted to do. We're good. No, I, I didn't have anything planned. I was just well, so on that note, Tack, I want to take over the show and talk about... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm going to take over the show. You're gonna t- you're gonna we take are going to talk about... Go ahead. Whatever Tack wants to talk about. Aww. <laughs> you want to do something better for the intro? Do it. No, I was just kidding. That'd be more fun. Leave all this in. I, oh, I'll I leave it all in. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah. So sitting across from me today is <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that me? Which across? We have two. We're you have two across. Sitting to the right of me. <laughs> oh, I see. She's second mic now. This is Adam. <laughs> That's Adam. <laughs> hey, Adam. How you Adam, doing? you sound. Uh, you get a cold or something? A little bit. A little My bit. underwear is a little tight tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and sitting just across from Adam is my name's Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't even do it. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, so well, while I got you guys, since you guys are the token couple, on the we show are kind today, of the token couple. Um, I don't know what that means, but okay. she had her hand in her mouth. I was just trying to figure out what oh. she was doing. What oh, is she oh. doing? You don't need to use two fingers to simulate my dick. Just one <laughs> is fine. The pinky. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just the tip. Okay, so um, when you're in a relationship, is it's been a while for me. So this is kind of good advice. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to do some adjustments. Oh, you're all good. Is, first of all, do you think arguing is healthy for a relationship? Yeah? Hmm. It depends on the level of the argument. So some, one person's definition of argument might be another person's definition of drop down, blow out, fight. So mm. having a difference of opinion, yes, is very healthy. You don't want... So some people might want it, but in my opinion, you don't want a person that is completely complacent and completely passive to every decision that needs to be made. So I think a difference of opinions in a relationship is very healthy because it shows, you know, a little bit of leverage on both sides of the, uh, on both sides of the relationship. So yes. Makeup sex is always fun too. Yeah. That's true. So we'll we'll sometimes fake fight tack and just to have the excuse. Um, so like this was a arguing versus open communication. So, I mean, I, I'm guessing if you don't have open communication, well, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to argue, you won't argue because you can argue about something ridiculous. But I mean, like, um, what you doing? Carry on. I'm just taking your picture. Okay. So like, um, so like I've always said like in relationships now, first of all, I am not like, an expert in any way in relationships, <laughs> but I like to act like I am. Um, but, um, of course I can't get a relationship last longer than like two and a half, three years. Um, so anyway, so I always said that open communication is important. And I think what's also equally as important is to each of you must be a pr- approachable to the other, meaning such as like, let's say, um, Adam said something on a show that kind of offended you, okay? So then you confront him and go, Wait, is this hypothetical or is this this real life? Hypothetical. (laughs) I don't know if it's real life or not. This is my hypothetical situation. Okay. So she comes to us to Adam and goes, Adam, will you sit on the show earlier tonight? It kind of hurt my feelings. And he'll go, Well, what did I say? Uh, Which, which part? And I go, Well, when he said XYZ, you know, and then he goes, Oh my God. So I didn't even realize, or that's not what I meant. I meant the, Oh, okay. That's being approachable. Mm-hmm. If he was to go, what are you talking about? Well, when he said this, Oh my God, what the fuck ever? Stop being a crybaby man and walks away. Now he's not approachable. Next time you have a problem, you're not going to bring it up because why go through that? Mm-hmm. Mm, that's so a good point. I always say that being, 
Yeah, so I, I think it's kind of both. You ways. both needs to be both parties. You both needs to be. You <laughs> guys, you guys, you guys need to work together. The two youths, <laughs> two youths. You both need to be approachable to one another. No matter how silly or stupid you think it is, you have to be. I feel like I'm like counseling. You t- I'm not. <laughs> no, no, I'm no. Just, <laughs> I'm just saying you guys specific. You know, not specifically, but. Just says, you're my couple here, so yeah. <laughs> you're what my you guys. Thank you, Dr. Tag. <laughs> oh, damn it, I was going to do the Dr. Phil up myself. What you two have here is, uh, I can't do a Dr. Phil yeah. at all. Was he That's a friend? I the can't. Doctor is oh. tag. <laughs> what? <laughs> the doctor is Tag, not, not you, Adam. <laughs> what, what Tag is trying to say is, what we seem to have here is a failure <laughs> to communicate. <laughs> not necessarily, but yeah. But if we're on Oprah, we get a prize. Oh, that's a good point. Be your friends, <laughs> yeah. You get a school, and you get a school. <laughs> Everybody gets a school. <laughs> on this week's show, my favorite things. Isn't that one of her things, or is that Ellen? No, that's her. Ellen does something like that We're now, too. We're going to talk she? about good news today. I was like... Really? Like, there must, something must have dropped yeah. out on that episode. <laughs> so all she did was walk around with people. I want to hear good news from you. Like, uh, my cousin is cancer free. She's cancer free. What's her name? And here's a car for her. Yeah. Wait, that, but that I said, went on for an but hour. it's, I was here, not her. <laughs> no. Yeah. So weird. Wait, so, so, so let me get this straight, Tack. What I just learned is that you actually watched Oprah for an hour. <laughs> this is when I was younger. Much oh, younger, yeah, so. much uh, like 32, 33. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, do you guys have any input on that topic about communication versus argument, Andrew? All right, let's move on. Oh, well, I was trying to put my words together. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to approach someone because you don't want them to to put you down for it. Am I not in the microphone enough? It's echoing a lot because you're not close enough. Yeah, if you get closer, it doesn't echo. Sometimes I am the he or ha Is that close enough? Can you take Adam's cock in your mouth now? <laughs> That's what she sounds like when she tries to approach me with a problem, when she's got my dick in her mouth. <laughs> it always turns out way better that way. I feel that if you approach your problems with a dick in your mouth... <laughs> It doesn't always work as well as you think it would. <laughs> oh. as well, it what about when I? What me. about when I have a problem, Tack? I need to tell her some problems I have. So come here, put your dick yeah. in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what were you saying? Uh, well, some things you don't want to hear the truth about. Some okay. things should be kept inside. Okay, but I'm talking about okay. I know if there's something that I offended you on. So if there's something that I said during the show that upset you, let's not even say me and you per se, but. It's just hypothetical. Yeah, in general. Well, how- I would think it would be hard to just go up and talk to the person about it, too. It would be hard to do it? If they weren't someone that you could talk to. Yeah. Should, yeah, yeah. That, that's my whole that's point. That's what I was agreeing. They're not approachable. So it's especially important. Especially in an early part of a staging or a budding relationship, when you're just learning that person is some of the, the foundation building times for communication. So if there is something that happens early in the relationship, I think it needs to be said. Not, this has nothing to do with you and me. This is just in general. But I think it needs to be said early enough if there's like a pet peeve or, you know, some, something that's bothering the other person. Right. To do two things. It sets the, the groundwork for how, yeah, y- how you're going to express yourself as the relationship continues. Mm-hmm. But it also communicates to that person that maybe there's some kind of habit or, you know, uh, thing that they're doing that the other partner does not like. So yeah, you have to, you mm-hmm. have to talk. Now that also tells the person that has the problem something is how, you know, in this situation, it would be me, how I would react to you. So if I reacted harshly and negatively and said, go fuck yourself or, you know, whatever. Well, now, you know, my, how, my communication style, how I'm going to respond back. So that tells a lot to the person that has yeah, the problem. And as then well. what happens there is that now next time she has a problem, she's not going to bring it up. Everything's going to bottle down. it in. Yeah. And then she's going to eventually probably go blow up down the line blow up down the line small. or find somebody else on the side that will listen to her issues yep that's true yeah is that why you're here tack are you the guy on the side that sh- that'll listen to the issues we he's such we, a good listener <laughs> we andrea tack you listen so well we me and andrea wanted to talk to you i was gonna say is this an intervention for me here uh are you guys both gonna say adam we love you very much um and because no. because we love it's you the other way around we- <laughs> <laughs> Get out! She doesn't love you anymore, and you say we're gonna hold hands at this point. Oh, Aww. we're too far away. All that's gonna do is give me a boner, guys. I don't, I don't, you're, you're approaching me the wrong way. You're turning me on by touching each other here. <laughs> 
Speaking of turning you on. Oh, boners? I thought, speaking boners, of my boner. Speaking of boners. Oh, Adam's specific boner. Oh, yeah. Have you guys yeah, seen uh, this new Pornhub thing? No. So I heard something about it in the... Maybe I, I saw it in I, Google I News or something. Real. I think it is, and I hope it is. But it's, it's the Tell Bang us. Fit. Bang Fit? I definitely have not heard this. You haven't heard this yet? Oh, no. My God. Well, first of all... Side note, Pornhub, they're doing some good things over there at Pornhub. I'm just going to say, they're doing that like college scholarship now. Yep. W- weren't they the ones that also did the, uh, they blocked all, oh no, that was some other one, like X Ex- Ex- Hamster or something. They blocked the access to North Carolina because of that. Oh yeah, because the bathroom yeah. policy thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. sorry. Different different porn site. <laughs> um, but Pornhub now, you really have to watch the trailer for this. Um but they're, they do, they do, it's this app called Bang Fit. Um, and what it is, is like, it's like a game do you slash to, workout. Do you want me to pull up on that and play? Is there audio to it? Yeah, it's audio. I was going to say, it sounds like a workout kind of video. It is. It's a workout, um, game that you can play by yourself with a partner or with a group. So we're going to play it? Uh, <laughs> I like that. I I would love that, but uh, I don't think you guys would love it that much. I, I would attack. Okay, Adam would, would love, love it. it. I don't, well, you might like it too. Who knows? I'm just I saying. Would, I would love it. As um, long as my to, girl likes those YouTube. kinds of things, and I would be happy doing it. But she doesn't. the wrong girl. Well, that's fine. I respect that. Yeah, look at Pornhub Bang Fit. Is it a, is it a YouTubeable thing? Is it going to be on yeah, YouTube? Yeah, okay. yeah, it'll be on YouTube. I looked it up on YouTube. God, this is going to cash under my name too. So now my advertisements are going to have to do with bank. It's not fit. bad. It's not bad. Or so you porn? Wait, what is it? No, it's not you porn. It's yeah, um, porn hub. Porn hub. Get your porn straight. Porn hub bang fit. Bang fit. Yeah. Search and show me the uh, what the thumbnails look like. Yeah, the, the top, top one? one. Top one. Yeah. All right, I'm going to play this. It's 2016. We move less than ever. We wake up and we don't move. We go to work and we don't move. Even when we move, we don't move. Can you guys see that okay? Mm -hmm. Our sedentary lifestyle and overloaded routine are making us neglect our health. And as a result, adult obesity has skyrocketed. That looks like me. To fight our inactive (laughs) tendencies, we've created tedious and exotic workout methods. But who has time for all that? To make things worse... Pornhub.com, with its huge offering of adult content, keeps users glued to their seats even... And I think it's important to point out Pornhub is not a sponsor of Living Pod Curiously. Also, also, if you're not going through and watching this video, it's all like cartoon animated stuff. Yeah, there's no nudity. Yeah, there's no nudity here or anything in this video. Other than my dick that is out in studio. (laughs) Longer. The truth is that no matter how busy you are, you always find time... To get busy. This is like my animation's That's ability. Why we came up with a unique healthy solution that won't just get you fit, it'll get you fit as f- <laughs> <laughs> Introducing Bang Fit, the fitness method gyms don't want you to know about. For years, experts around the globe have promoted the benefits of sex for the mind and body. You'd be surprised that when it comes to making love, you work out way more than just one muscle. <laughs> and work out my penis Hub's muscle. Going to prove it. I love how they have tennis Here's shoes on. How it works. <laughs> I like her socks. Actually, Bank I like his socks. It's a game-based fitness program that will get you into shape while having the time of your life. She has on leg warmers. Just go to our website and choose a sexercise routine. Next, select the number of players and gender. Then sync the website to your smartphone. By the way, the number of players could have been one, two, or many. Yeah, Is that what yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Touching it to your waist with the official Bang Fit band. Are you serious? You put it on your waist? The objective of the game is to (laughs) come along with a video on the screen. They're showing little sensor blocks over cartoons fucking. The better you coordinate your moves, the more points you get. You won't be pumping iron, but you'll be pumping (laughs) nonetheless. When the sexercise comes to an end, Ah, you get your final results and ranking. But this game isn't about who wins top honors, because with Bang Fit, everyone you are scores. You're a porn god. You can even annoy everyone your friends scores. by sharing it on social media. Oh, we will so share that on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> well, you guys get the point now, and now yeah. it's just kind of a wrap-up thing. Uh, that's hilarious, man. But that uh, looks pretty badass, right? Yeah, let's try it. Is that our attack? Is this? Are you assigning us homework? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys should absolutely try it, and uh, let me know. Let us all know next week. 
done. I mean, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm in for it. Let's do you? go right now. Well, it might take longer if you're actually going to go all the way through and order the bands and all that. So it could take longer. Oh. So. Do we actually have to buy something? I don't know. So there's a website there. You I can, can just put. To. I can just put a sock. Put it in a sock and tie it around my waist and call that good. Right? That looks sexy. It, as fuck. Dude. I don't know if the listeners got that from the from the audio of that video. But what happens is there's a little band that you wear around your waist and you put your phone in there and it using the accelerometers of the phone tied into the app. It knows your thrusting movements and where the phone is, and it gives you scoring you know, yeah. as, as well as however well you do the sex exercise, if you will. How does so, it know the climax time? I don't know. I mean, the thing is, it's just judging you on your movement, I guess. Does yeah. it have a audible sensor to know when you're <laughs> show, showing your O face a little bit? I don't know. You but, have uh, to follow what's on the screen. All right, but I, I would love to try it too. So, and I don't want to do just the solo one. Are we gonna so, do a group one with us? Well, I wasn't going to suggest that. I was going to say maybe there was a listener out there that might you know, want to. We need a listener to help Tack yeah. earn top yes. notches in that game. Wait, hold on. A female listener. Oh, that's a good good, good point. We need to clarify that. Yeah, I'd like, you know, so if somebody wants maybe, to help uh, me learn how to do it. Maybe whatever. Andrea's sister could come over and. Yeah. I'll, look, all you have to do is tell her that there's a game we want to play with her. Don't tell her what it is until she gets here. Everyone come over to our house for game night. (laughs) (laughs) That would invite all the girls from your salon over, and then I'll I'll buy all those waistbands, and we'll have everybody take out their smartphone, download the app. We'll see who gets the best score. Yes. (gasps) Holy shit. And everybody scores. Game night at the post You score twice. Game night at the post (laughs) I love it. Let's do it. All right. So you guys ready for a break? Yeah, sounds good to me. I'm All ready right, to we'll, try out the game. We'll take a break, and when we come back, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. we're going to hear from Adam. Yeah, yeah. I've got, so we had some some pretty. Uh, we had a good weekend. Let's just put it that way. And uh, I got to try out a new job experience. Okay, now, I'm not quitting my no. job. No, 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 no. It's a new okay, job. Experience. That's enough. That's never that's enough of a teaser. That's a good teaser. It had to do with. That's enough. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, and it was. Uh, and what happened this weekend will blow your mind. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sip on that. <laughs> Be right back. Once again, will the renegade master D4 damage of power to the people's back? Once again, will the renegade master D4 damage of power to the people's back? Once again, will the renegade master D4? On behalf of Tack Adam and myself, the cast here at Living Pod Cariously is proud to announce we are partnering with Smoke Rings out of Merritt Square Mall in sunny Merritt Island, Florida. That's right, Andrea. If you're looking for one of Central Florida's largest selection of oil, cigars, pipes, tobacco, and accessories for smoking and vaping, then Smoke Rings is the place to go. Smoke Rings offers the latest products from oils to rigs. I bought my Kanger Subox from them, and it rocks. By mentioning this ad, Smoke Rings is giving Living Living Podcariously listeners 10% off anything you purchase. Also, check out smokeringsonline.com and click the eSig link to learn some great facts about vaping. At facebook.com forward slash smoke rings merit square or give them a call at 321 453 1422. back <laughs> and uh so adam you were going to talk to us about a job or yeah something? so i, I tried something out and let me put it this way i see the appeal that people have for this profession i get it i understand it now much better yeah um it's a very i'm a social kind of guy i like mingling and i can you know i can carry on a conversation with somebody at a funeral at any even though i don't like going to funerals but you know anywhere i can typically pick up conversation okay so andrea presented me with a great opportunity for both and, of us, actually. Yeah. We did it together. We did That's do it together. Um, up at her salon, up at the uh, Brent Allen Salon and Day Spa, or Spa, or is it Day Spa? Mm-hmm. All right. They did something called a, um, I had it on my phone, but I just put it away. It was an invitational to a, what was it called? The electric, f- no. What was it? What was the name of it again? Soundgarden. That's right. The Soundgarden. It was an invitational uh, uh, electronic music DJ like party um, we had like two different djs in two different areas and at the spa at yeah the, yeah we have a huge venue yeah there's there. a giant there's venue a big area oh, okay. dance stage we had vip areas with bottle service we had two different bars what? 
Yeah, you can easily fit in maybe 200 people in there. I think you could probably get three. So anyway, it, it was big. So Andrea presented me uh, us with the opportunity to man uh, bartending. Uh, so there were two bars that were set up, yeah. and Andrea and I took one of them, and another girl took another one at the other end of the, the facility. And uh, let me tell you, that was a lot of fun. I had yeah. a blast doing that. So making drinks, yes, they had lots of liquor, lots of, you know, whatever, drinks and beer and stuff like that. It was full liquor. Mm-hmm. So uh, nobody came up with any really unusual drinks. I mean, they, they came up and asked what we had, and I said, well, you know, pretty standard drinks is what you get to choose from. We're not getting bartend, typical bartenders, but yeah, yeah. we had yeah, all they the... they ordered a Cosmopolitan, I handed them a rum and coke. That's the way it goes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... As long as the, well, the ingredients are in the name. <laughs> yeah. It was very obvious. I can do obvious. rum and coke. I can do vodka and cranberry. Yes, so. Right. The most popular drink, vodka and cranberry. It was the most yeah. popular by far. Cran- if they or, did uh, ask for something fancy, I was like, hey, I'm a hairstylist, not a bartender. <laughs> Captain and Coke was about the next closest. There was a few people that drank the whiskey that was there i was one of them <laughs> Shocking. but uh yeah not not many people drink the whiskey was it a gentleman's whiskey no it was i don't Wars. even remember it was good they had doers they also had seagram's uh seven they had i don't i don't remember all of them but the one that, that i drank was a cheap version of like an early times it wasn't even it wasn't even as good as early times but not to say that's not bad on that they, it, this wasn't a whiskey kind of crowd their their vodka was tito so top shelf vodka they had whatever they, they spent a lot of money on the liquor for sure gotcha that's cool. I got but, us a lot of tips, though. Yeah, that was the other part I was going to oh, say. Nice. We, so the, the owner of the salon was you know, just handing us – it was more voluntary, really. She was going to pay us a little bit, but not, not really for anything other than, here, thank you for, for yeah. your help. But she said we get to keep all of her tips. Nice. And I won't say the number, but we had a big jar, like a big glass jar, like a foot-tall glass jar. We had to empty that thing twice or three times maybe. Oh, it was wow. full. Yeah, it was, it was really good. I was doing a lot of flirting. I bet. Yep. You know, I could have come out there and made a little extra cash. I too, thought we invited sure. you to that, Tack. Negative. Well, hey, next uh, next <laughs> event, tell Brenda. I that hope we have one. The cops came three times, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. Why? Yeah. So the the Music. it wasn't Brenda's. That's the owner of the salon. It wasn't her event, so she didn't have to have a liquor license. It was the group that right. she rented the facility out to. They have a portable liquor license, so they can sell liquor and alcohol and all this stuff. Right. Uh, they showed up with their license. So when the cops showed up for noise complaints, and they're, they're zone business. So no, I mean, it's through not the woods. really near anything. Sort of. Through the woods, probably, probably about 400 yards away from her salon, uh, through thick woods are some houses. They're right on, oh. along what's called River Road, right there along the river. And, uh, they got complaints. The cops showed up at their house, apparently. And this is all rumor, so who the hell knows? They showed up at those people's houses, and sure enough, they could hear the music. And as long as there's a complaint, it doesn't have to be judged by a decibel level. As long as there's a complaint, they can tell you to turn it down. So and this is sure all enough, before 11 o'clock. Yeah. Wow. So they showed up several times, told them to turn down the music. Well, that was kind of cool for us because they had that giant outside venue, but they also set up backup DJ booths in both and in, in speakers and amps and everything in both sections of the salon. So one salon had it and one section of the spa had it. So you had two other areas where the DJs could perform. There was like eight DJs there that night, too. It was a big competition. So, sure enough, they shut down the outside music, moved everybody inside, and that brought more people right in front of our bar. So, it was, <laughs> nice. it helped. It helped us. Mm-hmm. So, hopefully, it was a good Thanks. success. Hopefully, Brenda will do it again. I hope so. That's cool. Cool, cool. I see the draw to being a bartender. A lot of money, real fast. I got it. But, man, those hours suck. We didn't get home till what, four? Yeah. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That was horrible. Yeah. I can't do that every night. No way. No, once yeah. a month, once every two weeks, maybe. But, I used to have a bar back a long time ago. I've done it. And that music eventually gets on your nerves. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to drink, for though. Hours. Dance too. And you're just like, ugh. And then, like, as a bar back, I used to uh, bar back in this huge club. So it was like basically four clubs in one. So you had oh, like. Oh, damn. When you go in the main entrance, you go into the right. That was like your normal kind of club, you know. To the left was like the billiards or like. Are you l- saying to the right? Latin- to the right? To the left. To the left. To the left. left. <laughs> yeah. To the left was like your billiard side along with also a live band would play to the left. And then he also had upstairs. And upstairs on the right was a comedy club. And then on the left was more like your goth club. Oh, thing. sweet. Okay. So anyway, so I used to bar back. So which meant I used to run the billiard section and also bar back. So if a you know, bartender needed ice or needed more liquor or needed like keg, another keg or something like that, I had to bring it upstairs or wherever, you know. And what was annoying is that when I set loaded up the, um, like the dolly with like 
stack of like beer or a keg or liquor or whatever, trying to get through the hundreds and hundreds of people in this crowd to get to this certain. You always heard the same fucking joke every six feet. Oh dear. Like, you just leave that right here, man. Oh uh, yeah. You just leave that right here. Ha. Huh? I'm going to say, ah, yeah, fucking move, you know. <laughs> it's so annoying. I hated working there. Uh, anywho. So, yeah, that's our little second second job performance experience. It was it was pretty good. Everyone well, needs cool. Adrian and Adam to bartend at their parties. So you, we had to wear, I had to wear a, a red shirt and a vest, a black vest. So <laughs> yeah. if you're, and that's it, nothing else on the bottom. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's a bottomless um, party. If you're, are you interested, like really interested in doing some bartending? Next I, time? I would if I was available, yeah. Okay. As long as I have to work the next day, yeah. It'll be me and Tack. Wait, what? How's that work? I want to get some in on some of that action again. <laughs> <laughs> There's only room for two. Oh. Well, yeah. Tack could have been over that other girl. She was kind of cute, too. Right up his alley. Yeah. Right. Was she single? I don't know. Do you guys even know who she was? Know. Her name's Brittany. She's an actual bartender. Yeah, Tack, she was um I perfect for you. Skinny, l- like shorter girl. Really yeah. cute. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, so give her my number, and we'll be good to go. All right. <laughs> um, all right, so let's move on. Okay, like, okay. Another topic that I want to talk about was what I call going above and beyond the Call of Duty. Like the video game? No. Oh. Okay, so we're going to take you guys again as a couple. Okay. When... Okay, I already know some of these answers already, but I'm just going to ask because our viewers may not. Okay. All right. So, Andrea, mm-hmm. do you ever initiate, like, sex with him? Um, Maybe once an hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not too far of an exaggeration, Dan. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's usually when I'm here, I can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> that happens um, all the time when you're here and yeah. not. So... Um, and assuming you as well. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, okay. So I know this couple that the way they, this is how they do things. Okay. The woman never initiates. I actually used to date a girl who was the same way too. Yeah, I have to. They're, yeah. yeah. Never did it. Doesn't matter what you were doing. She just, you always had to make the first move. Yep. Okay. Not even put on like a sexy outfit and be laying in the bed when you walk in. Me? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing Tack no, in a night. If home. they're if they're more standoffish no. and don't want to like go out and like do something or touch, they could just put on no. something nice. And that make that to a candles. guy to a guy that is that is wonderful to see a girl to me yeah. at least to see a girl dressed up in a really sexy outfit. And I'm not just talking, you know, it's obviously something special for yeah. sex. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so anyway, so the girl like never initiates anything. Okay. In order for him, <clears throat> for sex to happen between the two of them, he has to <clears throat> initiate, first of all. Is there a special knock or something? Like <laughs> SOS knock? <clears throat> he has to initiate. And by initiating, to, just to get into the bed and get to anything started, he has to romance her. Like every single time. Like he has to start off with kissing, you know, and maybe light touching. Well, that's foreplay. Kiss the neck. No, but he has to romance. Well, that's her. not so much romance to me. That's more just that's more foreplay. That's kind of an expected thing, unless I, you guys are both drunk and just but really horny. Every morning. single time. Uh, what about to, even like just morning sex, like where you just wake up? No, and... it doesn't happen. Oh. Every single time he has to basically, you know, like the first time you're with a girl and you have to like kind of do all this little extra. Stuff. Sure. It's like that every single time he has to do this. Just in order to have sex with his well, wife that he's been with for a very, very long time. Maybe she, so, hmm, <coughs> let's go, let's go clinical on her, on this for just a minute. Okay. Maybe she needs that kind of romancing before sex. So for her, that's her foreplay. Right. To lubricate properly. So she needs that. If okay. she doesn't have that lubrication there properly, then maybe it's painful for her or maybe it's uncomfortable for her. So she needs, her body to become aroused. Okay. And that's what it takes <clears throat> for her to get to the point where she's ready to have sex. Maybe it, I gotcha. And maybe, maybe somebody, maybe we just need to introduce the two of them to KY jelly or coconut, <laughs> coconut oil works or really coconut well. Oil. Um, it's all natural. Well, 
I got you. I mean, that you you brought up good points. Interesting. I have no idea. Maybe. Can we get um, them in here to interview them? I would love to do an I, interview I, with I don't them. Know and if as we can a gift, not. we I'm could give sure. them a big jar of coconut oil to take home. Or Vaseline. <laughs> um, but like... So Ooh, what if Vicks Vapor to... Rub would be good lubricant? No. That would be Ooh, horrible. That would be no. fun. No, no, like, no. Ooh, it burns and it is cold at the same time. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so he has to romance, okay, every single time, and he, he always does. That's my point, too. Always. And he said, just to add in there, too, he always goes down on her, too, every single time, too, without fail. Every single time. Does Sounds she go like down good... on him every time? Never. Oh. Never? <clears throat> um. Because I asked the same question, you know, and so I, I I took that as I think you're being brainwashed, dude. Like <laughs> I've been in relationships. Okay, I don't have the most success. Once again, I am not an expert yeah. in relationships by any means, but I've had relationships where it's just like you're sitting around, and you're like, "Hey, you want to do me?" And I'm like, "Okay," and then you go and you do it. There's no romancing yeah. involved, especially when you're in a relationship. You know that person, you know. Now that I have to go, hey, so, <laughs> and then kind of sneak up on it. Now, I think. And then kiss your hand, you know. Do the yawn to, thing with yeah. your arm that goes over the shoulder. Right, and have to kiss your hand. <laughs> I want to start being an Adam, do all that stuff. I think romancing <laughs> is important for more, more okay, times than not. Do you not. think he's going above and beyond the call of duty? Like well, obviously think- not above the call of duty, because if that's what, if you, the, the word, the verb here is, well, not the verb, the noun here is duty. Not not in the bad way. <laughs> the noun here is duty, and the duty there is sex. So what he's doing is what's getting him to the reward. He has to do that. Above and beyond would be like doing more than normal, more than what would take it take that it to is, get there. But I told for this normal guy. people, yes. But in their relationship, they've set the, so that woman has set a bar completely exactly. different than the rest I like of how women. You rewarded that because I told him I was like, it's not like that's not right. normal, dude. Other relationships are and different. And he yes. he. Thought that it was. And I was like, no, dude, no. This, like, you, you, sir, should be saluted and, uh, should be bowed down to by. So her. here's what I have to say to that. If, if, and I'm not, this is what I'm not wishing bad wants, things. So. I'm not wishing bad things on their relationship. But if they do break up, the next girl that meets this guy is going to be <laughs> happy as hell. <laughs> right. She's gonna be like, what, more appreciative. where have you been my whole life? <laughs> and then she's never going to be satisfied again. Yeah, nope. Because no other guy in the world is going to do that. Reality yeah. check for her. <laughs> Unless yeah. somebody loves her to death, it's going to be like, right. hey, this is, uh, you know, this, this is, this is un, unbalanced a little bit. <laughs> needs right. to be, she needs to, come on, give him a, give him a, maybe just a, a handy that out of, out of the ordinary one day or something. <laughs> yeah. Just give him something. You don't want to go down yeah. on him? Fine. Maybe you don't like it in your mouth. Wait, fine. Got it. <laughs> right. Give I him love something. my lollipops, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lucky man. I just wanted to get you guys' take and also any listeners that they had, you know. No, that's okay. Hey, I would love to meet that couple. I would really, and I would be non-objective and non-judgmental. I, gotcha. I would I, just want to know those questions. I would want to know. Yeah, they, know the they're not to like questions. really local or anything, so it doesn't. It would, we have Skype. They, wouldn't be they can to. be anonymous. All right, I got you. I'll I'll see what I can't promise. Right. Anything, Maybe just I'll an interview with him. Do. Well, I don't think that'd be fair. But I mean, you'd have to have both sides. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'll see what I can do. I can't now, promise anything. Though, can I so. can I ask a very um, asshole question here? Okay. Is let's talk maybe his appearance and body and everything and hers as well. So, for example, okay. uh, in my head, in the, the mental image you just gave me to paint for this couple, and no offense to them, I have, I don't know who they are at all. Right, right, right. But in my head, I'm picturing her as a high maintenance, you know, drop dead gorgeous knockout. Don't shake your head yes or no yet. I haven't said it done on his, No, no. And on his side, I'm picturing some, you know, gentleman, but maybe not the most attractive looking guy. So, for her to get to her level of <laughs> pleasure, maybe okay. she's a physical type of girl. She needs some extra attention to get to where she would normally get to with maybe a better looking guy. So in my head, in the picture I just painted in my head for this couple, okay. we've got a drop dead gorgeous knockout woman who's very high maintenance mm-hmm. and a guy that's willing to bend over backwards for her because he is happy with be- having her as a trophy girl in um, the relationship. I, I don't think that the appearance is you're not really spot on with it at all. I mean, there's not really any. I'm not saying you're wrong or not wrong. I, I don't think that has a factor. That would almost in this make it easier all. to stomach in this situation if she was gorgeous no. and there's there's no that there's not a factor in that at all. Okay, that like hmm. well, you were right in saying like yeah he he does bend over backwards for her, like you know sure now, other things other than just I mean, sex like everything else in the relationship too. 
Um, cause that I'm might say sure a lot about 100%. her. If it's just sex, then that's something different. That's maybe a psychological side. But if Does it's she everything. control other aspects of their relationship uh, too? Pro- I'm not sure 100%. See, these are, I, how are you sure. being the doctor in this relationship? Yeah. You're Dr. not Tack. being Dr. Tack. I mean, I think maybe a little bit, but it could be the other way around also too. He may control some things she does. I don't know That's everything. A, I think we might have just nailed something there. I, I, we need to follow up with these two because I want to know <laughs> – what you got to give them some, some pseudo names on here because I want to know more about – Jack and Jill, or whoever the hell I was you're going to say, them. Jack and Jill. Are you? Yeah. Well, that'll be their names. We're meant to be together. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I want to. I want to know some more details about that because that that may happen to a lot more listeners of ours than you may know. That that's a good. Point. And it could be the other way around. The girl might have to take care of the guy and do everything he wants to do, and he's just a you know yeah, deadbeat and never does that's anything okay, for her. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you misogynist motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. Misogyny over here. No, I'm just saying that there needs to be, it should be evil, evil. Evil. <laughs> should be evil. Even playing field is all I'm saying, you know. And, and I feel that sometimes maybe, um, there may be some advantages being taken up. Is that, did I say that right? No, it sounded right. Uh, some advantages being taken up is what you said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is that right? Some, some adv- advantages being taken up. Taking advantage of the situation is how you should have worded that. I feel that there is advantages that are being taken out. <laughs> we know what I'm trying to say. Yes, I know what you're so, trying to say. All right. I just feel that. Are they listeners? Uh, is he a listener? Um, I think so. And I can't remember. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, we want to know more. You're going to have to hit him up and say, hey, we, unless he would get offended. But uh, we talked well, about you a little bit. Oh no! I checked with him to make sure that I can talk about All right, it. And cool. He's nice. aware that I do the show and stuff like that. Yeah. And I said, "Hey, do you mind if I bring it up? And Dad. do you mind if I?" I was like, "I'm not gonna say, you know, not that anybody would know here or anywhere. I'm just not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna bring it up." And this is a great question. I want to ask you, Andrea, as you as well. So now that our friends, a lot of our closest friends, and some, you know, not so close friends, but people that know us on Facebook, know that we do a show like this. Yeah. I have seen a really interesting sociology experiment going on <laughs> and did not know I was part of it until recently because of something somebody said to me. But I've noticed that a lot of the friends that I have that I would normally have more open conversations with don't quite say stuff to me. Or if they do, they'll add a caveat to it. Hmm. You can't talk about this on the show. <laughs> Um, no, have you noticed that with me. any of your friends? Of course, no, a lot no. of your friends are in media anyway, but so they, they. A lot of my friends don't always listen to the shows. I, <laughs> I had try s- to get them to listen to podcasts. Some of them don't. What's a podcast? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's a podcast? What is that? I've had people literally tell me that they're not going to continue the conversation because they know I'll talk about it on here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I won't talk about it. <laughs> right, right. And let me tell you what they said. Here, here's the, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting sociology experiment I've experienced and did not know what was going on until recently. No clue. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so let's take a break. And when we come back, Adam, we're going to check to hear it from... Uh, I love yeah. that. I'm sorry, I love that music. <laughs> Every time I hear Andrew's it, it gets giddy. Gonna, Andrew's going to do her segment of the diary when we come back. Sounds you got some good. goodies for us this week? I have a few questions. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, by the way, to the listeners... Andrea has now completely owned and taken over the Guyery segment. She receives the emails. She she preps the notes together for it. If it's got a Guyery in the subject, it's hers. So if you send them in, she gets them first. She screens through them and picks the good ones. Actually, I think you pick them all, but she is the one who manages that whole segment now. So Yeah, so send me some juicy questions. Juicy. <laughs> all right, well, we will be back. Then do the Harlem shit. Hearing into the inner thoughts and expressions of men. Women submit questions for Adam and Tack to get brutal, honest admissions. We call this the Guyery. Guyery? Really? Is that the best we could come up with? Our first question comes from Allison in Ohio. Ohio again, Tack. Right? Ohio, we love you. I've heard guys go crazy over a girl's smile. Are teeth a major issue? Hmm. That's a good question. 
<laughs> I think the eyes better to me. I mean, a girl's smile is important, but it's not the teeth that make the smile to me. It's the entire face. So, so if I had no teeth in here with this smile? N- no teeth is a no-go. <laughs> teeth are a must, but they don't have to be perfect. Well, like, I've always said no teeth. <laughs> no, like, well, I've been pretty clear about that, but this does not apply. Right. Um, no, the teeth don't make it for me. The, the so if they were smile all rotting itself. out? Well, no, I don't want snaggle tooth, bitch, either. I don't want a green tooth, but no, you got to have a pretty smile with teeth that are normal. They don't have to be picture-perfect, crest commercial kind of teeth, but they don't have to be, you know, they don't have to be perfect, but they have to be there. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And normal. Yeah, I'm on the same team here. Yeah, same thing. The eyes uh, make it for me, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a sucker for eyes as yeah. well. So if they don't have eyes, then you <laughs> Well, I mean, that's kind of tax preference right now. <laughs> I don't no care. eyes and no teeth? They can't, they can't judge you then, Ty. Oh, that's true. You can tell them you're not redheaded. No. Oh. <laughs> Redheads are hot. Redheads are hot. Tax hot. No. Me and her had a private conversation over there earlier. <laughs> about redheads? No, but we <laughs> You can't tell him about that. I was I was I wasn't like digging for a compliment, but I was talking to her about this chick that I'm talking to. And I was like, I just think like she's out of my league. And like and saying things like that, she was never like, No, what do you mean? And she was just like <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, uh, I mean, she's really hot and I'm not a very attractive guy. And she's like, well, it's not always looks. And I'm like, oh my God. Never mind. But then I said, <laughs> maybe you're out of her league. Careful with your mic. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, anywho. I fixed um, it. I guess. All right. So they have to have teeth and they have to have eyes. Got it. Yeah, pretty much. That's it. That's the only <laughs> standards men have. <laughs> That's, <it. laughs> That's all you need. Yep. <laughs> All right, the next one is from Joe from Florida. Do you hate it when girls talk about their ex-boyfriends? Wait, is this for you? I don't talk about... Oh, do I talk about my ex-boyfriends? Well, um, I mean, this was a guy. Is that a questions. guy Joe or a girl Joe? Girl or do Joe. we not know? No, girl Joe, just All right. Joe. Do I hate it when girls talk about their ex-boyfriends? Mm-hmm. Uh, it depends on the, the frequency, I guess, um, and what yeah. the conversation's about. Um I don't have an issue with a single ex-boyfriend of yours or any other girl that I've ever dated. Um, if it is a constant comparison to things that I'm doing in my life, then yes. I, I, I get frustrated at that because I don't want to be put on a pedestal of comparison to exes in relationships. Other than that, no, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. But I'm not the jealous kind of guy, though. That's just because right. you talk about all your exes all the time. Now, that don't use Joe's <laughs> question to stab me in the back. Hang on now. <laughs> uh, I feel like we've covered this before, but um, but uh, uh, of course, occasionally stories are going to come up here and there, which I'm totally cool with. You know, I'll even share stories. Oh, yeah, I did this girl one time. We did this or whatever, you know. But yeah, like he was saying, if it was constant comparison or like every freaking minute talking about... Well, Mike did this, or Mike, you know, I'd be like, oh my God, just go be with Mike. The worst, <laughs> the worst time is in bed. Listen, my ex, you know, John or whatever his name is, he did this to me and I really liked it. Whoa. That might be a little. <laughs> Wait, I thought you liked hearing much. about what we like in bed. I do, but I don't, I don't need to know. I, I want you to tell me instructions. want to hear what Mike you like. did it so not well. Who you, like. <laughs> you do it good, Adam, but Mike's dick was so much bigger. It just did it better. You know, I don't want to hear that. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, actually, maybe I would like to hear that. Oh, my God. I wouldn't mind hearing that. What? I'd be all right with it. Okay. Number three. <laughs> He's hmm. a masochist. <laughs> Does Is he have what? a backup plan over here with Ooh. that? <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's a masochist? Somebody who enjoys pain. Oh. No. no I'm not a masochist. I know, because that's not painful for you. But Nothing <laughs> is. <laughs> oh. I'm confused. I haven't found it yet. This this uh, studio is feeling awful lonely at the second, guys. <laughs> oh, huh? we heard him. He does have a heart. What? What the fuck? We oh, heard him. Have a heart. <laughs> he said he's feeling lonely. It's the first time. Oh no, no, no isolated. No. I wasn't making fun of you at all. That was a- more of like a- afraid. That's more of like an average person wouldn't want to hear about how an ex boyfriend does things in bed. I wonder what Maybe that makes. And you're like, I would enjoy it. Like, I wouldn't enjoy it. It'd be painful. And so I was like, oh, he's a masochist. <laughs> you know. Hmm. I would think it'd be very painful. 
Mike maybe was I, very hey, painful. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I do have a problem. I don't have jealousy issues. I like the thought. Was that painful to hear or was it painful to take? <laughs> it, was painful, it was painful to take. I don't, I don't have jealousy issues. I don't. Sorry. Oh, my God. Is it's there a, a short in that keep, thing? It probably keeps hitting it. Yeah, but this sounds like a short. I know. Is, I this, know. is it the mic that's happening? No, I think it's this cable. Okay. Um. Maybe I do have a problem. I don't. I don't mind. I have no jealousy issues. I don't mind hearing about stories. In fact, I kind of like hearing about it's stories that are sexy it, and turn me on. Maybe I'm just weird. I don't know. All right. <laughs> next question. <laughs> do boyfriends need to be reassured often that they're still loved? This one's from Candace in Orlando. Um, I wouldn't say often, but we. Us guys, we like to be told we're pretty too. Sometimes, you know, like we we like to hear that. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and we like to hear compliments, too. I mean, you may not act like it, but we do. But you're not supposed to call We're the penis needy. cute, right? Do what? You're not supposed to call the penis cute. Uh, oh, that's probably, so cute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, try to avoid the emasculating compliments. A compliment yeah. that's emasculating to a guy is not a compliment at all. It is defeating. So, yeah, yeah. your compliments need to be sincere, but also filtered, if that makes sense. <laughs> Just thought out. But yes, Just compli- think about it. Please shower us with compliments. We love to hear them. As do girls. Well, that's obvious. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, this one's from Libby in Georgia. Georgia. You- Georgia. Georgia. She's a Georgia, Georgia peach. Libby and her big plan. plantation in Georgia <laughs> oh, with dear. all of her peaches. Here she goes. <laughs> just she say wants that. to know, do you like to use toys in the bedroom? Uh, yes. Next question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, without a doubt, unequivocally, yes. So you like strap-ons and all that? Sure. I, I mean, I don't mind any of that. I wouldn't take it in the ass. Well, what else would you use the strap-on for? A little, a little. <laughs> Let me show you something. A here. little, uh, <laughs> a little DP in. You know what I mean? You don't need a strap on. You are, you're already endowed. No. Oh, <laughs> that's the kind of compliment I like to hear right there. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Way no, better but than what Mike. about what? <laughs> he said DP. You know what DP in is? I'm figuring it's a around double, the corner where fudge is made. <laughs> <laughs> um, it could be. Oh, the double, way he talks so sexy. Double penetration. So. Two in either one hole or one in each hole. Isn't that going to make it really tight in there? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's never going to. You really don't have that problem though. You're already pretty tight <laughs> as it is. Um, well, see that? Right. See that reversal compliment yeah. attack? Did you see what I did so, there? So I like toys too, but <laughs> I like to try with a girl one time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's like you talking about masturbatory toys. Yeah, <laughs> those are. Uh, those are oh, holy shit! It's, Speaking it's of that, it's been a year. Japan has come out with something new, and of course, it came from Japan. But Japan came out with a new toy. All right, it is a. Uh, it, it's essentially a fucking machine, but you don't move. You put your dick in it, and it has it does all of the motions of whatever is going on in your virtual reality goggles. So it's a complete right. interactive device, and they even have fake boobs on it too. It's a complete interactive device for mm-hmm. your schlong. So you never need a woman again. Never. Hmm. But it, it is a Japanese made, so they only come in extra small. I don't I don't know what that's all about. All right. <laughs> we'll feel like real men, Tech. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> all right, sorry. Segway. I there. know what to get you for your birthday. Sweet. Mm-hmm. It's pretty big though. It'll be like is you know, taking up it'll be it, it'll be the footboard in our bed. Yeah, and do they make those for females also? Uh yeah, more so sure. than anything else. They're called dildos. <laughs> that does everything for the you with VR? your VR. I don't know. We'll have to look that up. That'd be interesting to see. I mean, the guys can't have all the fun. You guys already have homework. You can't be assigning more homework. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we need to really download that app. I only have one more question. And I need a um, a teammate, too. So, Oh, yes. We need to find Tack a teammate for this. Jeremy can help out. No. No, he's specified. He wants a woman. Yes, I was very clear. This one is from Holly in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Why do guys always smack or grab a girl's butt? Oh. Well, let's start back in the dawn of time. Yeah, this is a... This With is Adam a, and Eve? This is sure. a... Uh, or what do you caveman. Call it? A uh, animalistic instinct, I think, Tack. I think you're on the right track there. Yeah. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's just something you just want to smack your ass. I can't, I can't help it when I'm with a girl, like my girl, you know? 
Anytime she walks by, I just kind of smack her. I can't help it. <laughs> I kind of do the same I, I thing. Like it, yeah, he know? does it all the time. Yeah. But people who I'm not even with will do it. Just just bend over to get something, you get smacked. Is Girls, it a? Guys, do you think? Everywhere. So let's go. Let's it go happens on the, to me every week too. Does it? <laughs> let's go on the subconscious level attack. Do you think that has something to do with a domination or a dominance trait? I don't know. Do you think know. that might be a, sh- a some somewhat of a sign of dominance, an involuntary? I guess maybe. I mean, it's not That's not why but I'm subliminal. doing it. But well, I mean, it's it is more of like this is mine. Smack. You know what I mean? Maybe like like that. Well, yeah. As you know, as it gets like diluted down to us. As opposed to like, yeah, you know, caveman times. You know, it's more of like, yeah, that's my ass or smack. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but maybe by the way, the sounds there. the sounds of the smacks you're hearing are him smacking Andrea's ass in studio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would be a lot louder than that. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Ooh, harder, harder. <laughs> Do it again, Tack. Ooh, that was a good one. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, so maybe, yeah, I would think so. I don't know. Is that something you enjoy, Andrea? I'm indifferent. Really? Indifferent to it? You don't care about getting hurt. smack on the ass? Eh, okay, let me ask. Me a nice I'm, I'm going to reverse grab, that though. question back on you for the reverse Gyrie question All here. Right. There was an episode of a show that we like to watch called The Big Bang Theory, where Sheldon, one of the lead characters of the show, got drunk over at one of the family's houses. And he's not a drinker at all. But he got drunk, and Amy, his nerdy girlfriend, comes out to the living room where he and one of the fathers is standing. And Sheldon, in his drunken stupor, smacks his nerdy girlfriend on the ass and says, why don't you go into the kitchen and get me another beer? She loved it. And then she loved it. (laughs) Do girls like, not not you know hard or or painful, but do they like that show of dominance in front of where other people could see it? Because to her, it was... Both in front of other people, being showing that sign of affection, but also to her, it was a little bit arousing. At least that's what they portrayed. Yeah, the she girls wasn't like it. thinking about like what he was saying. Right. That is a good question and... too. That's a good question. Side note: My Umbrella in that show, fucking hilarious. I love yeah. her. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> she's she's Amy. Yeah, she's she, uh, she's fucking great. On PhD that show. in neuroscience. She's really yeah. a doctor. Mm-hmm. That's why she was originally was on that show just as a consultant. She only. was. They actually. Uh, they actually in an episode before she showed up as Sheldon's girlfriend or potential girlfriend. They and I have way too much knowledge on this show. I love it. Um, mm-hmm. They they d- name dropped her at one point. Saying, yeah, yeah, TV's yeah, Blossom yeah. has a PhD in neuroscience. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. two or three episodes later, there she is. Mm-hmm. So all right, back to your question. Do girls like that in two forms? One that sign of dominance from their man does it kind of turn them on a little bit and two do they like others to see that happening to them where it's not misogynistic or it's not demeaning it's a public display of affection to the woman in a manly aggressive way this is mine well i I'm can't his. say everyone yeah. would you speak for all women everywhere right well because You're the- I, I heard an episode on the um the morning radio show the what is it, the 15 no second day update and this guy called in, and he didn't know what happened on the date, why she wouldn't call him back. They called her, and she said that he had smacked her on the butt when they were out in front of everyone, and she was so pissed off about it, she would not talk huh. or listen to him. And he said she just had some like white powdery stuff on there, and he was just trying to get it off. Oh, that's an excuse. But she wouldn't even listen to any of it. She was just so perturbed that he did this and embarrassed, and it drove her nuts. And then turn the wheel the other way, you know, maybe be a form of affection, you know, like, ooh, well, this guy is just showing everyone that I'm his girl, so then it's a nice way. Well, what do you think? Oh, you can smack my ass all you want. Do you like it though? I know you allow me, but do you do you like it? Do you like that kind of affection being shown? Of course, I do. especially in public. Well, there's other ways. I mean, you I'm not going to do it at like in public. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to smack you on the ass at church. I mean, I'm not going to smack your ass at the elementary Honey, school. Give me that hymn. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That kind of reminds me of a story. Over. It reminds me of a story. Because, like, yeah, I've always smacked my girl's ass anytime you know relationship. But I never do it in public. I think it, unless it's like, eh, not around our friends. I wouldn't, unless it's funny to them, you know, anyway, yeah. I wouldn't embarrass her. You know what I mean? Well, what if we're here this but, summer watching football and your girl's over here and you want her to grab you a beer? Oh, and you're yeah, sitting definitely. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How that's, else would you I probably, ask for a beer? I, damn it. I'd probably do the backhand, you know, like, psh, you backhand know, to the face? But Give me a beer. <laughs> no. <laughs> but there was a time where uh, <laughs> you joked about, you know, the school or whatever, where I did that one time. I was, uh. You smacked a kid on the ass at school? <laughs> no. <laughs> My, uh, girlfriend, I uh, eventually didn't marry her. Um, 
was a school teacher. She was a middle school teacher, and I we just went to lunch together, and I dropped her off, and then I was kissing her goodbye. Of course, there's students everywhere. Yeah. And then she turns around, and I smacked her on the ass. I was like, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> All these kids are going to now see Tack as a role model, and they're going to go smacking each other in the ass. I was like, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, they're like, going to go home and, and smack their just, mom. She was just like, yeah, probably not. But oh, well. What's <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, done is done. I mean, could you imagine you as a middle school kid, and one of your teachers you see getting kissed? First of all, that's weird enough as it is. Sure. Somebody's kissing your teacher. That's when everyone And gets, then she gets Ooh. her ass like backhanded as she's walking away. Like You'd be like, holy shit. Like. To me, I think that would yeah, be a tack, conversation like between your boys for a while. Let's let's clarify this for some of the listeners though. Tack is, you know, the kind of the rocker looking, tattooed up, you know, dude. So you would expect a smack to come out of you. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> on the ass. I don't smack faces. No, you only use a to. fist on the face. Got it. <laughs> and you wouldn't expect it. Because that's you? fucking metal. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then you look at you and you wouldn't expect it? Because I think your hand is on my ass more than it's off of my ass. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tack, do we have any other reverse Gyrie questions for Andrea? Oh, you would ask me that. Uh, I think we asked a couple already. Um, you guys make it easy for me. Well, you're easy, so. <laughs> easy like Sunday morning. Actually, let me look at my notes just to double check. That's my daddy's song. He used to sing to me when I was a little girl. Oh. They but played just, it at his funeral. I have one question, but this isn't necessarily a girl question. Kind of, but not really. And this is also mostly. Do you like big dick? <laughs> um, yes. This is just a quick, weird question that will make a listener giggle. And this anybody can answer this, but you know. Oh, I thought you were going to say anybody can giggle. <laughs> anybody can giggle. <laughs> You're loud. Okay, good job. How often do you wash your jeans? <laughs> wow. Um, probably wear them twice and then wash them. Two times wash. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. How often do you wash my jeans? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they get in the hamper. Uh, we have a hamper? <laughs> um, is that what that funk is in this room? The studio's kind of smelling tonight. I thought it was the dog, but I guess. <laughs> That's your jeans. <laughs> You're supposed to wash those? Is that what he's thinking? I, I've kind of let jeans kind of go for a while. Only only because like it my, weight, my weight fluctuates right now. So every time I get my jeans yeah. in the dryer, they shrink. Well, if you wear underwear, and that'll take then me like a week. It It'll take me a week to like get them stretched back out again to where they're comfortable. So oh, just do a couple of squat thrusts in your jeans after they come out of the dryer. <laughs> when you they think. stand up on their own, you need to wash them. Oh, that's how you know. I usually just take them off and lean them against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sweet, that's awesome. Hmm. Other than that, I don't have anything else. Um, yeah, I had heard um, on another radio show that guys, um, on average, wash their sheets. This is when they live alone about every four months. I think we talked about this. Too. Yeah, we had a question on this. I don't know if it was this iteration. I've never been. I mean, it was, oh, I thought it was pretty recent. Um, huh. Um, no, I, I would go. So when I was single, I would go probably a month. And then I would wash. So how I wash my sheets, because I always had white sheets. I only recently have I had different colored sheets, but I always had white sheets. So I would wash my sheets whenever I ran out of t-shirts and I had enough of those undershirts that would usually last me about a month. And then it was time to wash the whites. I took the, the uh, what do you call it? The sheets off the bed and threw them in there to so wash the whites. You didn't wash them in between girls? <laughs> oh no, I definitely, I just changed the sheets in between girls. Okay. That's good. At least yeah. you did that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wash in between girls, so... You I wash yourself in between girls? <laughs> I wash myself in between girls, <laughs> and I wash the sheets between girls, so... That's like three times a day. So, I'm, I have the same sheets on. I'm a way overdue to wash my sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Tack hasn't washed his sheet, sheets in seven months. It's been a year, so... No. So, it's supposed to be every week. No, I, I, it hasn't really been a year, but it's... I am probably overdue to wash them. It's probably been a couple months. Do you want me to come over and wash your sheets? No, nah, I'm all set. I can handle okay. it. Appreciate that. Unless you're gonna do it naked. Well, or yeah, s- I'd have send to be your, doing the laundry. Your oh. sister needs to come over and do the dishes for him while you wash his clothes. <laughs> and just say it. <laughs> You'd be set. All set. Tack is not objecting to this. And we'll get the game ready. Oh yes, yeah, so we get to play the game. We too. get to play bang fit. while the laundry's going. Yeah. You say commercial. Okay, everybody, time to play bang fit. <laughs> bang fit. <laughs> well, that's hilarious. We gotta everybody try that. Runs the living room. Don't have as well. I, don't, I can't think of any questions to turn back on to Andrea. I got to really write some for next week. 
If I can turn back time, if I can find a way. <laughs> I'm serious about those parodies. Something, something or other. I don't mm-hmm. know. That. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that concludes this episode for this week. And I would walk 5,000 miles just to. <laughs> sorry. I would walk 500 miles just to be the man who'd walk the 1,000 miles. 1,000 miles. Anyway, um, okay, so, uh, <laughs> anything else, Adam? No, uh, nothing else? no, I don't think so. Just be sure to email your questions in for the diary to show at livingpodcariously.com, as well as anything else you want us to, you know, maybe talk about on the air. If you have any, uh, fundraisers for nonprofits or anything that you want to, uh, have plugged on the show, shoot us a, shoot us an email. We'll, we're happy to talk about it. And speaking of getting plugged on the show, I am still looking for a teammate. <laughs> and uh, hit that up also at show at com, And also check out our Twitter at Podcarious. Yep. And if you want to, do you want to plug anything, Andrew? I have a few things that need plugged. Okay. Giggity. DP time tack. <laughs> <laughs> do we high five in the middle of that? I don't know how that's supposed to work. You can. Okay. Okay. Just don't let them touch. That's weird. <laughs> All right. Well, once again, my and name is Don't Tack, look me in the eye again. All right. My name is Tack. My name is Adam. And I'm Andrea. And we will see you next week. Bye.